Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So just a couple of days ago, I posted this video right here uh, where I went over Hard OCP's article, uh, Kyle Bennett's article, discussing the NVIDIA GeForce Partner Program and how this could affect uh, basically the PC gaming market. And I went ahead in that video, I got it up real quick, so I want to go ahead and touch on a couple of things that I kind of left out in that video. And then I want to kind of give you what I've come across since then uh, and kind of where this whole situation's at and kind of my thoughts as to the reason why I think NVIDIA has done this. Now, there's no concrete information. That's going to be the speculation portion of this video towards the end. Uh, it's just going to be my thoughts as to maybe why NVIDIA would want to seem so opportunistic and kind of capitalize on a situation that doesn't appear to be any real reason why NVIDIA needs to capitalize. I mean, they have 70-ish percent if you go by shipping volume, and in reality, if you look at like the Steam hardware survey, they're well over 80% of the GPU market, the gaming market. So why the hell would they want to go ahead and do anything that may possibly hurt their brand? Well, that's what I'm going to go ahead and surmise at that particular point. But first, let's go over a couple things that I missed in the last video. All right, so in the last video, I actually forgot to describe the real issue from the GeForce Partner Program. And I'm going to go over that from Kyle's article here uh, at Hard OCP. So this is going to be in the description below if you guys want to read the whole thing yourself if you haven't before. But all right, let's get into it. Uh, the crux of the issue with NVIDIA GPP comes down to a single requirement in order to be part of GPP. So this is a requirement to be a part of the program. In order to have access to the GPP program, its partners must have its gaming brand aligned exclusively with GeForce. I have read the documents with this requirement spelled out on it. Now, if you guys want to find out more about GPP, you can find the article, the link is in the description below, or head over to PC World. Uh, today, Kyle was actually on their live stream and basically went over everything in there. And the reason why I'm making this video is a lot of the information he brought up in this video uh, actually makes a lot more sense. These are things that he didn't cover in the article, uh, m mostly his just opinion on certain things, and it really got me thinking a little bit. Now, I reached out to Kyle earlier today to see if I could get the documentation myself. He said to protect his sources, he does not want to leak them. He goes over that in that video as well. And as much as that sucks, because I wanted to find the documentation for myself, I went online, I checked around, uh, I couldn't find anything, not the information that he has anyway, but it makes a lot of sense. He's got a lot of contacts from a lot of companies with his 20 or so years in the business here. So it makes sense for him to have access to things that, you know, just some schmuck who talks about PC gaming hardware on the internet isn't going to have access to. And, you know, I don't want anybody losing their jobs either over this. So I didn't really push the issue there. But anyway, let's go back over what I just read to you guys. And a lot of people are going, well, this isn't really a big issue. You know, to be a partner with NVIDIA, you just have to kind of follow their guidelines, but you don't really have to. Uh, the real issue here is, and the example that he uses in the article is think of Asus's uh, Republic of Gamers, their ROG brand. Basically, NVIDIA is telling them that if you want to be our partner in this program, we basically own ROG. And that's the real problem is a third party company is dictating what another company spent money building. That's a brand that Asus has built up. I mean, this is something that they had to pour time and resources in. Uh, ROG didn't just pop out of the ground. It was instantly su uh, successful and recognizable. They had to make great products. They had to promote this and push it into the mainstream and put it in products that we care about. And that's why we all know what it is. Now, there's a lot of branding out there that nobody cares about. Nobody's really heard of. Um, and, you know, that's not that big of a deal because it's not that huge. But when somebody else comes over and says, hey, if you want to do business with us, you have to do this. And we're going to be kind of dictating things to you. That's not right. And the real issue is, is if somebody says, no, screw that. You know, we spent the time. We built this brand up and they don't want to be a part of that. NVIDIA is going to cut them out of launch partner status, cut them out of uh, monetary funds that they use uh, for advertising, mutual advertising funds. But there's 17 distinct things 
that NVIDIA does with their partners and only two of them that they will do if you are not a partner with them. So basically you're going to be pushed to the side. Your NVIDIA is just going to be hands off with you if you do not abide by their partner program. And considering how dominant a force NVIDIA is currently in the GPU market, like we just discussed, 70 to 80% of the market is NVIDIA. That's the vast majority of the market. I mean, you can't just ignore that. You can't just say, oh, I don't need 80% of my business. That will just shut down a lot of people. So this is putting a lot of companies between a rock and a hard place. And that's the reason why this is so important. And that's the reason why I use the mobster thumbnail. It's because that's basically what it is. It's, hey, if you want some protection, you got to flow me some money. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's, it's not right. And the worst part about this is, is let's say there's some company that's like, no, I don't want to be a part of this. And then NVIDIA just stops sending them supply, you know? It's very clear that those that do abide by this and that are a part of this program are going to get preferential treatment. And that makes sense. You know, somebody that's willing to sacrifice their own branding for you are going to receive, you know, uh, supply. You know, if there's supply shortages like there are now, those are the people you're going to take care of, the people that are willing to go to back for you. And that's just setting up a very anti-competitive market. Who's really going to say no to NVIDIA? in this particular instance, the 80% market share when, you know, AMD's only got the 20-ish percent. And gamers haven't supported AMD. I've made many videos going over that. Gamers haven't really supported their video cards even when they were superior. Anybody remember Kepler? GCN was better than Kepler. Just was. Kepler still sold better. But now that NVIDIA clearly has technology lead, they have everything. They are in the lead. They're in the dominant spot. Uh, but what came from that video, the last video, my big question was, is why would they do this? Why would they allow this to even be the possibility that this information would get out and possibly harm their brand? And this is the speculation portion. This is just me kind of going over what I think. Um, Kyle actually said something pretty important in that uh, interview that he did earlier. And he said that NVIDIA is thinking long term. See, us in the PC industry, uh, you know, us PC gamers and hardware enthusiasts, we think very short term. Um, you know, in my comment sections, I see people all the time going, oh, yeah, the GTX 10 series that came out like three years ago. It hasn't even been two years, you know, but in our world, it feels like it's been forever and it's time to move on. So our perspective's a little bit more skewed than let's say business executives that do have to think long-term. And it makes sense that this is more of a long-term plan. I did mention in the last video that I think it's because the market is in such a bad shape right now, bad condition, that they could probably get away with it more now than they could, you know, let's say when everything was fine two years ago. Uh, the reason for that is, is if they come out with anything, it looks great. It's fantastic. Everybody's just happy and will be, you know, rejoicing in the streets because you can get a GPU. It's not like, you know, normal times when, you know, somebody does something wrong and stupid and it's like, well, look, I'll just go with my, your competitor. I'll just buy their stuff. Uh, AMD is not competing at the super high end right now. And like I said, you can't even buy those anyway. I just did a video on that right here showing that AMD prices are even higher, more inflated over NVIDIA's currently. So to me, it seems like the market's primed for them to go ahead and kind of slip this by when people really aren't noticing because it's not the big focus. And to that point, ironically enough, Kyle sent me a second email stating that I was the second real, you know, tech tuber, journalist, whatever, to actually contact him about this, which is really kind of disturbing when you think about it. And I contacted him this morning. I was going to do it over the weekend, but I was busy. Uh, so we've had, it came out last Thursday. So we had uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and today is now Tuesday. So that's five days. And I'm the second person to really contact him about this. It really goes to show you where the industry is. You know, they're really just kind of turning the blind eye because, like I said, there's a lot of people, NVIDIA is their lifeblood. Uh, you know, they review video cards and NVIDIA is the dominant player and you don't bite the hand that feeds. Luckily, I'm just some schmuck with a mouth and I get on the internet and I talk about what I feel like. I couldn't care less, you know, how other people feel about that. Um, I just say, call them like I see them and that's the end of it. But anyways, getting back on track, back to thinking long-term and thinking like a business, 
if you really think about it, both Intel and AMD really control the PC market. Uh, GPUs don't do anything just sitting in a case by themselves. They don't do anything plugged into a motherboard without a processor. They just sit there and they do absolutely nothing. And this also came up in that interview. Uh, remember when Intel wanted to get rid of PCI Express to cut out NVIDIA? And I don't remember the reasoning why, and he couldn't either on the, uh, the interview. The reasoning why they had to put it in there, they were kind of forced into using PCI uh, Express, and that was so that other manufacturers could build devices and plug them in, so it wasn't a proprietary standard that Intel did. But if NVIDIA becomes that dominant, you know, because they're encroaching on Intel's turf now, and I agree with a lot of what they were talking about in the, in the conversation there, uh, because the reasoning why NVIDIA would do this isn't so much for AMD. They could squash AMD right now pretty easily. And they should be able to pump enough money into stuff to out-innovate them, assuming, you know, MCM, uh, if they can get that up and running here soon, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, regardless, Intel seems to be the main reason for this. You know, Intel is the bigger competitor and the, and the real dominant factor in the PC space. It's not NVIDIA, it's Intel. Intel controls a lot more of it than they do. And by locking down these manufacturers and getting them under their thumb, NVIDIA then has some more leverage to go ahead and put against basically Intel to kind of shore themselves up. See, Intel and AMD kind of have their own, it's a diopoly. They're the only two x86 manufacturers out there. They're the only ones that can do it. Uh, so NVIDIA actually doesn't have a monopoly on anything. They could be pushed out of the market entirely. And in my opinion, this is the reason why they're doing this, is they're trying to stamp down, put their thumb on as many things as they can to make sure that they don't get pushed out of the market. Now, I'm just thinking like hardball business tactics that these companies do to each other every day under the table outside of the news. And these guys really, if they could, they would start shoving each other out of the market and go for Monopoly. If AMD could knock out NVIDIA and take over all the GPUs, they absolutely would. If Intel could somehow do it, they absolutely would. If NVIDIA could knock the other two out and start making x86 processors, they absolutely would. So to me, it's just NVIDIA trying to protect itself by doing some very, very shady stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not defending them. I can kind of understand the reasoning behind it from a business perspective, because at any time, if Intel and AMD said, well, let's not use PCI Express anymore. Let's each have our own proprietary uh, thing. They could do that, and they could not allow NVIDIA to produce whatever that is. Let's call it AGP2, just to make things simpler. Um, if they wanted to, they could do that, and NVIDIA's pretty much out of business at that point. Not saying that that's ever going to happen. I don't think it would, because that would actually take out a lot of other players in the market. Pretty much anybody who builds add-in cards, it would really destroy their business. So I don't think that something like that would ever happen. But if you really think about it, NVIDIA is the most expendable of the three companies. AMD is technically the smallest of the three, but with their x86 license and the fact that Intel does not want to be sued left and right for uh, you know, basically becoming a monopoly, they don't want all the government's regulators jumping all over them and crushing them, they actually need AMD to stick around. Uh, you know, they'll give them a small percentage of the market and they'll keep them around forever, no matter what. Even if Intel has something that's infinitely superior. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Kind of like the last 10 years up until Ryzen. But alrighty, guys, that's just my thought. That's the reason why I think that NVIDIA is doing this. It's more of a security blanket. They're trying to completely dominate as much of the PC gaming market as possible. They know that AMD is always going to have companies like Sapphire and PowerColor. And, you know, there's others out there, XFX, that only supply the, their GPUs. But they're trying to get as much of the market under their thumb as they can because they don't have that security blanket that AMD has and that Intel, I mean, they don't need a security blanket. They're, they are the dominant player. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comment section below. This whole situation is really, really weird. I really hope the word gets out and anti-competitive practices like these, these need to be brought up and hopefully it gets stamped out. 
I'm saying I understand NVIDIA's position. It doesn't mean that it's not borderline illegal. I mean, it's right on that line. That's not for me to decide. I'm not a lawyer, but this could lead to a lot of bad things for uh, NVIDIA and AMD. AMD's in a bad spot right now. I mean, Navi might come out and just bash the hell out of uh, NVIDIA, but let's just say all the manufacturers do agree to this. They can't make, you know, the AMD cards the way that, you know, they normally would. They wouldn't present them. They wouldn't have these really cool gaming cards out there that you and I would want to buy because of this licensing agreement. So this could be a real issue and it's straight up anti-competitive. When a third party company dictates to another company, this is how you have to operate. Otherwise, you know, Bob over here is going to get my protection and you're just going to be left out in the cold. I'm not saying anything's going to happen, but you know, it gets cold sometimes. You know, you got to read between the lines. This is how business is done. It's shady and it takes lawyers to kind of work out whether it is legal or illegal. But as consumers, you guys need to be informed that this is what's going on. But once again, let me know what you guys think. And let me know what you guys think about only me and one other person contacting Kyle about this. It seems a little strange to me that everybody stuck their head in the sand all at the same time, plugged their ears. Like I said back to Kyle, I mean, this isn't uh, as disturbing as that is. It's really, it's not a shock. It didn't surprise me, but... I mean, I was really glad that he gave me that little tidbit of information. I figured I'd pass that along to you guys. Well, alrighty, guys, that's all I got for today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.